If you have seen my other video, you already know that Elias and I met and tested a few reactions involving cesium. The most spectacular was the reaction between liquid oxygen and cesium. If you want to see that, go check out my last video. But we had some time left and tested a few other reactions. They are at this point not worth a video each, so we thought it might be best to show them all in one video. Elias also made a video about them, so check out his channel, you can find the link in the description. As always, the experiments were done in a safe location and with proper safety equipment. Do not repeat them at home. We first wanted to see what the reaction between cesium and iodine looks like. We weren't sure if the reaction would be interesting since iodine is a solid and won't mix with a cesium. On the other hand, iodine is a fairly electronegative element and cesium wants nothing more than getting rid of its electron. So we were curious to see what would happen if both of them met. We again pulled up a tiny amount of cesium with a syringe and ripped it onto the iodine. Now that we know there is potential in this reaction, let's scale it up a bit. We filled some more iodine in a beaker to drop some cesium onto it from a safe distance. In this reaction, the cesium reacts with the iodine to form cesium iodide. The reaction is fairly tame because the reaction partners can't mix properly. So if you want to see this repeated with bromine, let us know. We also tested the reaction between cesium and sulfur to form cesium sulfide. The reaction was relatively boring and the cesium caught fire as soon as it left the syringe. But it looks nice, so I thought I would show it to you. In my video about the cesium isolation, I warned you about the usage of Teflon aka PTFE as a threat sealant. And this is the reason why. Es gibt Studien. Oh, okay, interessant. What you see here is the cesium defluorinating the Teflon. We are not sure if this reaction would look the same without oxygen present. So we will explore it further in a future video. We also wanted to know what the reaction with dichloromethane looked like. So we added a small amount of cesium to a few milliliters of DCM. And nothing happened. But from Elias' experience regarding the reaction between chlorinated solvents and alkali metals, we knew that it was shock sensitive. So we came up with this extremely sophisticated method to drop the vial. Last but not least, we wanted to see what the reaction between CS NAC and water looks like. NAC is an alloy between sodium and potassium that is a liquid at room temperature. And CS NAC? Well, it's an alloy between sodium, potassium and cesium. To make it, we first added some NAC to a small vial. We then removed some cesium from the Schlenk flask to add it to our NAC. Due to the high surface tension of neck, it first didn't want to mix properly. You can see the blobs of neck floating on top of the cesium. By the way, if you want to see me make a pretty vial of CS neck, let me know and I will see if I can make it happen. After a little bit of persuasion with a heat gun, the cesium finally mixed with the neck. 
and it was time to drop it in some water. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am currently working on a neck fountain that uses a magneto hydrodynamic pump. If you don't want to miss that video, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. If you want to support me, you can do that on Patreon or by becoming a member of this channel. A huge thank you to all my subscribers and especially my patrons. You guys are awesome. Other than that, thank you a lot for watching.